Hello crafty friends, it's Sharon Luska here from My Crafty Greetings and I'm here with a Here Plus There Studio Calico paper pack. I got this paper pack because I thought that it looked like it was potentially good paper for making masculine cards. It's got a good selection of colors in here and patterns. I really like these houses. There's some pink houses there and there is a little bit of pink in this card pack so if you wanted to make some mock girly not frilly not lacy kind of cards you could make women's cards too but I thought specifically what a great pack for men and uh, my husband really likes to ride his bike so I thought maybe down the road because he's in October for his birthday it could be a good card pack for him there's clouds and sky in here there's puppy dogs and there's also a piece of paper that looks a lot like grass kind of sorta it's called bowling green but it'll look good for grass. So anyways, I thought maybe it was time for us to get going with some masculine cards. And the first thing that I pulled out was this sheet of paper that had all the little houses on it. I cut a five by seven piece from it and then fussy cut a couple rows of houses out of it. And uh, these are some pretty high density houses. I'm not sure that I'd like to live in a neighborhood like this, but uh, I think in my first apartment, I probably was. <laughs> so I'm not sure which window would have been mine, but anyway, so I've got a little piece here of my packing foam sheets and I've already stuck on a little bit of Xyron um, sticker sheet. And I don't know if you saw in my previous video, but I actually take the refill pack apart, get rid of the clear plastic, part and I just use this sheet to back on foam or pieces of paper, die cuts, things that I want um, to have already sticky. And if you had stick it sheets available in your area, that might be a little bit easier, but in Canada, we're a little limited with some of our craft supplies. So I finally got this cut to an appropriate size with all the little divots cut out. And I'm gonna peel that strip off and stick my packing foam on here. Boy, you think I'd stick it faster than that since I doubled this up. <laughs> Anyways, I got that stuck on pretty good other than a couple little trims that I gotta do here and there. And I'm gonna grab my next row of houses here. Uh, not that row, Sharon. <laughs> the next row. <laughs> yeah, the next row, Sharon. <laughs> okay, here we go. I'll just dry fit this behind the first piece because I want a double layer of packing foam behind the first layer of packing foam. And then I'm just going to roughly outline this so that I can cut out the rooftop line from this piece of uh, already pre-stickied packing foam sheet. And once I get around all these corners and get them cut, you can see here I'll get that piece glued on. And then I'm gonna glue my first row of houses so that they're popped up as well. And luckily I didn't glue that to my mat. <laughs> So here it is all stuck on and just get that padded down into place and now I'm going to use the bigger row and I'm going to switch out to foam tape here just so that it's a little bit firmer. There is a density difference between foam tape and the packing foam. There's also a weight difference. So if I had done this all in foam tape, this card would be a much heavier card, which if you're in an area where that makes a difference, um, that's one more reason why I say use that free packing foam that you can get at any type of store. So just quickly there, uh, I'm missing some footage that showed me assembling it together. We'll get back to the finished assembled card in a second here. But I'm actually taking this stamp and making it all wavy for a reason. What I want to do is I want to make a banner so that I can fly that banner through the air above my buildings. And uh, I just picked out a random happy birthday stamp. I'm finding that a lot of stamp sets have these uh, types of stamp set or stamp sentiments, just simple ones. And now I'm going to draw a little airplane. So I'm starting off with the wheel and then the covering for the wheel. And then I'm also going to make a couple lines here just for the support for the airplane wing. And that's the front of the plane and the prop holder, propeller holder, I should say. There's where the little pilot's gonna sit and the tail of the plane. And then I'm gonna bring it down and around and connect it together. Put a couple little details there. And of course we need a man to fly, fly the plane. We don't want a plane up in the air if nobody's flying it. And then I'm just gonna draw a little bit here 
to make the wing and then we'll put some propellers on the plane and how about some propeller swooshes in a circle and I think that looks about right. Now I've got some candied apple uh, distress oxide here and I'm just going to paint this in, make it nice and red so that it matches with the theme of the paper. And the other thing too is when I thought about sketching this out myself, I took a look at the paper and it has a very kind of loose style to it. So you can definitely get away with um, some of your own artwork. And you know, it's kind of fun to do that. So I'm gonna fussy cut the plane out, but first I'm gonna get this banner. I did a nice close up so you can see I'm just following along. Now if it's easier, if you're going to try this, you may wanna put some pencil marks around there just to give yourself a chance um, to have a line to follow, but I'm just gonna eyeball it because it really doesn't need to be perfect for this particular banner. I'm just looking for something that's gonna go with the style of the buildings. And I'm going to give it a bit of a deep fishtail here, just that'll make it look a little bit more like it's flying through the air and being blown around. And I'm gonna just correct up a few of my curves here and <laughs> get some of my mess out of the way. And now I'm going to detail cut this little plane that I got here. And it's a pretty easy shape to fussy cut. Now, if you're wondering how I got the idea to draw this plane, I actually looked up um, planes and banners on the internet and then just did images. So now I'm taking a little piece of string here and I'm gonna fold that in half. And I'm gonna get some of my ATG, which is my glue boogers, as you know. <laughs> so that's a really big one, wow. <laughs> so must be because of the time of year, you know, everybody's sick and everything like that. Haha, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Anyways, um, I'm just gonna take these and manipulate them so I can stick these uh, together in a V shape and then stick it on the back of the banner. Now I already did tack down the banner in the center with some glue and uh, I didn't get the footage for that and then I got called away so it is glued down good but I'm gonna pick up the other ends and just give them a bit of a curve here and attach the string by which the plane will be pulling this banner. And I'm also gonna cut a few little foam pieces and this is just a really narrow, uh, shallow foam that I have, and uh, that'll help give a nice kind of blowy curve, billowy curve, if you will, to this banner. And get that stuck on, and I'll also add a little bit to the tail here, and that'll give it a nice billowy look too. And then I'm gonna add some, um, some of that uh, foam tape as well, just to the back of the plane. Just a couple little pieces to give it some support and lift it up. And then I'll get those all, the protective backings peeled off and I'm gonna pop that over top of that string just to make sure that it looks like it's actually pulling it through the sky. And what do you think? A little bit 3D, lots of buildings, little plane pulling a happy birthday banner. <laughs> There's my first masculine happy birthday card. Probably a good card too for somebody who's in real estate or maybe somebody who've just moved to New York City. Anyways, this is a Creative Expressions die and I've pulled out Candied Apple, Mermaid Lagoon, Twisted Citron, Spiced Marmalade and Squeezed Lemonade. Ooh, that was a mouthful. Um, out of my homemade Distress Oxide cubes and I've got some finger daubers here and I'm going to just um, add some ink onto these letters. So of course I have happy and birthday. Birthday I severed into two letter segments and did the same thing. And I actually had stuck them onto a few label sheets. They're post-it label sheets that you can get at the office supply store. And that just holds them nice and still too while I'm working on them. So I've got the H done and I'm just gonna throw some blue on the A, got the P and the Y done. And now I'm gonna glue them over top of one solid happy. <laughs> and uh, get those into place and you can see I'm watching carefully how I put this together because one of the um, feet on the H is shorter because it actually attaches to the A and you're gonna want to just pay a little bit of attention to your letters before you go gluing them down make sure you have them in the right orientation that you haven't mixed up the two P's or got the H upside down I think the A and the Y are okay because 
you can't get those upside down unless you're really <laughs> gonna be not paying attention so I'm gonna put some ATG on here and I've got some of this dotted paper that came out of the paper pack and what I thought I'd like to do is actually highlight some of these with some um, shine and I thought well I'm gonna heat emboss those Oh, and I didn't stick this to my card base. I actually set that card base aside. <laughs> as soon as I was going to go stick it down, I realized, yeah, heat embossing and already gluing something to a base is not a great idea. Try to always do your heat embossing well in advance of actually assembling pieces together. So I set that first layer and I thought, you know what, it still needed a little bit more shine given that that was a dauber rather than a stamp. If I had a round stamp, I could have done it in one shot and got those all set got a little bit of i can't remember what this is but i'll put it on the screen uh distress uh, just regular distress ink oh boy it's vintage photo i went back and looked so i'm just highlighting my circles and then i'm going to distress this white piece here because it doesn't look anything like the paper i'm also going to clean off the uh, distress ink from the embossing and I had to reset it again because I it had lost its shine so anyways I'm taking some of that uh, jeweler's cord and wrapping it around uh, as a little bit of a detail I think it pulls in the dark cardstock that I'm putting behind the um, little rectangle there <laughs> so what do you call that like I mean is it a sentiment thinger <laughs> a die cut it's a die cut we know that for sure so anyways, uh, I've got some more of my uh, packing foam here and uh, where the sticky didn't quite hit the edge, I'm adding a little bit of ATG in my brilliance. So I'm going to stick that all together and I'm going to make sure that I'm putting the ATG on the white side so that the distressed side is sticking up. Made that mistake before a couple times. And I'm just going to eyeball the layout here of the happy birthday. I find that... Um, if I lay it out and make sure that it looks good first and then put the glue on, uh, I have a lot easier time. Sometimes I get a little ahead of myself and I decide, oh, I'm going to glue this all up. And then I try to aim and, oh boy, do I make a mess. I just make a mess. So dry fitting things is always a very smart thing to do if you slow down just a little bit when you're crafting. <laughs> so frequently, that is not what I do. I don't take my own advice all the time. But... I've got these two laid out here now and glued down and now I'm going to take this piece that I embossed and wrapped thread around and distressed and glue it on and I'm gonna flip that on top by accident. Oh, I also found out too that this Tombow multi glue in the green container sticks really, really good when you're sticking on any type of foam, whether it is uh, foam tape or packing foam, whatever it is. Anyways, there's my finished card. I did add some stars just to zhuzh it up a little bit. I love that word, zhuzh. <laughs> so it's zhuzhed uh, to make a nice birthday card. I've got my next card here, number three, and I pulled myself out a metal button and a really funky happy birthday sentiment. And of course, yes, I'm wearing my house coat. Now I'm busted. Do you guys wear like, what do you wear when you craft? Comfy clothes? Okay, seriously, dogs? <laughs> I don't know why they always have to like start squeaking things when I'm recording here too. Anyways, do you guys wear comfy clothes when you craft or do you wear a house coat? I don't know why I think best in my pajamas. I'm a late night person, a night owl, if you will. And sometimes when I'm having a crafty block, I find just throwing my house coat over top of whatever I'm wearing works pretty darn good. <laughs> so anyways, I heat embossed just Ranger Gold on top of this. And I'm going to mark it so that I can see where it would land uh, behind uh, this piece of cardstock. And then I'm just gonna rip carefully in a straight line. Of course, I'm using the lines that are already part of the print job on this. And I'm being careful to rip in the right direction so that I leave the white edge um, showing in the opening here. And I'm just gonna roll this up a little bit around a paper. <laughs> Sorry, I'm gonna stop. Okay, I wore their little paws out so they should be quiet. Anyways, I've got this all rolled up here and um, I'm going to make this part of um, the accent detail of the card. So I'm just gonna dry fit that happy birthday back here and I've decided that I would like this to be a little bit darker so I'm taking uh, a Distress Oxide Ink Aged Marigold or 
I don't know, something, anyways, something orangey that matches your paper. Pick it a distress that matches the paper that you're using. And uh, I'm taping the little curl in place here because I want to keep that tight on the inside. And then I'm just going to manipulate it and squish it down a little bit so it kind of has a teardrop shape. And I'm unrolling it slightly and then rolling it forward so that the ATG catches. And then I'll do that once more to hold it in place. And I'm going to get some jewelry cording here and I'm going to wrap it around that loop of paper that I've made or the roll of paper that I made. I'm going to tape it to the back of the card here and I purposely used a piece of scotch tape so that it would keep the cording away from itself so that it would be a little bit wider around the paper roll and then I'm just manipulating a knot here and sliding it down the length of the cord to put it in a spot where my button's going to be able to fit and still show the knot and uh, I've got some reverse tweezers here <laughs> I was smart enough to use them this time and um, I put some glue to hold that knot in place and also a little bit along the cord to extend past and then I'm ATGing behind the happy birthday here I got it in the spot that I liked it's still a little dusty but I think it'll be okay now this is a little bit more of my packing foam and my glue is dry now I've got my packing foam in place to lift up that uh, front decorative cardstock and I'm just going to get it lined up over top here so that it has a nice edge showing and then shows the happy birthday I think that looks pretty good and then I've got my button which I'll glue down here now I did put two little tiny strips of foam just so that it would be able to catch on either side of that cording and I'm going to use my reversible tweezers once again just to hold the button in place once I get it situated here. I'm starting to be a little more clever in my craft room. Now I'm going to squeeze a little bit more. This is art glitter glue that I have in this bottle too. And oh, I also always forget to say, these are five by seven cards. <laughs> so there is one more birthday card for the men in our life or for the women who aren't fussed about getting something flowery or cutesy. <laughs> So here's my last card and I actually am going to be doing a second series to this. So what I'm doing here is I've got um, some small lettering that was in a stamp set. Um, and uh, this is obviously going to say happy birthday because it's a happy birthday card series, no surprise. <laughs> so um, I just lined up the birthday as close to the edge of the paper as I could. And then I'm going to put the happy across that because what I want to do is actually fit the greeting um, in between the rows of chevrons on that, um, I don't know, what did we, printed paper. Oh, I, why do I always forget that word? printed paper. I guess because when I'm in the craft room, I don't have to think about what it's called. I just have to like it and use it. And then when I'm doing a video, I want to tell you guys what it is. And my words, they just leave me. So the place where I want to situate this happy birthday greeting is uh, going to be between these chevrons. So I'm just going to cut along here and I'm hoping to stop at that one gray chevron there. And oops, I cut a little bit too far. <laughs> so I'm going to get out that, that scotch tape there. And uh, then I'm going to cut along the green um, arrow or chevron, whatever you want to call it here. And uh, I need to cut a little bit into the scotch tape here. And then I'm going to cut along the edge of uh, the gray arrow. And then I'm going to fold back just the corner that I don't want cut off. Fold that out of the way. And I'm folding it a little further back than it needs to go so that it doesn't get cut by the blade. And then I'm just going to cut along um, and make sure that it's lined up along the top of the next row of arrows. So if you were really confident cutting a straight line with scissors, which I am not doing something like this, especially where I'm depending on a stamp being able to fit in a small space. So I folded that up and just stuck it back together. Now once I eyeballed my happy birthday greeting, I realized that we were a little shy of space here. So I had to take off the gray chevron, but no worry. I'm just going to uh, glue it on top of the paper. And um, I'm gonna add a little bit of ATG here and get that situated 
and I'll tuck the little, sometimes the ATG just sticks out and if you watch for those little pieces hanging, you can always just kind of fold them back. So I'm getting that happy birthday situated in here. I thought it was a clever, sneaky way of hiding a sentiment um, in a card design. And I've got that gray chevron here. I've got it situated. This is an old technique here that I love to use and it's using foam tape just to prop up one side of an element and allow the other side to slope down to paper level and it looks kind of cool because when you look at the card all of the panels are on a little bit of an angle so I'm just gonna prop that up and there's already ATG on the back to stick that down and then my uh, sentiment here I'm gonna add a little bit of scotch tape to the back just to make sure that that doesn't come all undone on me and this is the back of the blue piece and I've already added uh, on a piece of foam tape to prop it up so that it's at a corresponding angle to the first piece and I'm gonna dry fit it to make sure that I don't leave myself a surprise gap and I've got that in place now and it's wedged up and I'll take the little bit of, of uh, I don't know what you call that, anti-stick paper, I don't know, the backing on the foam. I'm gonna take the backing on the foam off. Now for my last one, I'm going to just add a little bit of extra foam tape um, because I'm going to be adding my elements, which are balloons, air balloons, onto, um, onto the edge of that and I don't want it kind of getting squished in. So I'm going to add that to the very edge of my card. Again, a five by seven card. And here are the balloons that I have. Um, they are Bow Bunny and Inka Dinka Doo um, stamp sets. And um, I didn't show the stamping because I think we all pretty much know how to do stamping, but um, I did use a stamp positioner and um, inked up the colored portions of the balloons first and then just used my favorite black ink, which is the Versa Mark or Versa Fine, whatever it is, the Versa black ink. And uh, I'm adding some foam tape to these and I'm trying to be thoughtful with the placement of the foam tape so that if the edge is hanging over on the opposite side of the sweep of the paper that it has some support and that as it follows along the paper dip that it then has another piece on the opposite side and that allows them to look like they're hovering above a piece of paper that has some movement to it and uh, I'm just gonna add a little ATG to the uh, side of the balloon that is going to be touching the paper um, like normally and then I'm also you can't see it here but I'm adding a little ATG also to the basket to make sure that I can stick that down so I'm just sliding the edge of the foam tape up to the edge of that foam taped printed paper and I'm setting that into place and I'm getting my other two balloons set up here where I have the backing paper off of the tape and I'm just gonna slide them into position Hopefully I get them lined up the way I had imagined them looking and that does it. And then the last thing I'm going to do is the colored chevrons I decided that I would go over with glossy accents and uh, that way they'll stand out. And then after I kind of took a look at the colored um, chevrons with glossy accents, I decided that any of the single gray chevrons should also be covered, including the one that I added to the side of the happy birthday. And I did cut myself out, just hand cut some uh, clouds and stuck them around the balloons and that's my card. Hopefully you enjoyed my videos today. If you haven't subscribed yet, I sure would love it if you would. And I will be back with part two very shortly of my cards for men videos. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye.